Hey guys, Shane here, and we are at it again. We're gonna be hot tent camping. Uh, we got to camp. I'm gonna be racing daylight. I'm losing it quickly. Our moon's already up. Um, yeah, it got chillier a little quicker than I was expecting, but that's cool. We got a hot tent, so that doesn't really matter, but we're gonna get uh, camp set up. And uh, man, I'm excited to be here right now. I had a six day work uh, stretch, so. The boys are down at the water plane right now. I'm going to get this camp set up and just kind of live into it. I'm super excited about it. Let's do it. So last week when we were out here camping, it was really, really wet. And we got mud right on the inside of the tent. This isn't a big deal. It should just brush right out of there right now. The way I folded it was, uh, I folded, sorry. It's kind of cold out here. It's taking my breath away. Anyway, I, uh, I folded it back so it wouldn't go on the inside of the tent. When I put these up, um, it's really, really tight and they can be a pain in the butt. So what I do, and I'll show you, I extend these bottom legs out like this. All the way on that notch there you can see that and I do the same thing on the pole with the Y on the top of it and the reason why I do that is because it's really almost too tight on the inside of the tent when I do it so on the inside of the tent what I'll do is I'll loosen or I'll loosen I'll take these ones off and I'll put the tent together and I'll pop these in and you'll see that as I go. That's the only downfall about the tent. So when I come down here to the bottom, what I'll do is I'll put this foot in here like this. See how it's off? Then I'll pop it in together like that. It's just way simple, way easy. Now I gotta clean all these leaves out of here because we cleaned up in the middle of a rainstorm. No, it was just muddy, but without everything being fast forwarded up for you, for me to get this tent up, it's literally like five minutes and it's super windy. So it's going to be, it's going to be a cool camping experience tonight. So we did it again. We bought another cot. Uh, it's 35 bucks. I just, you can't beat that price. Let me show you once again how this cot goes together. It's super cool, super fast. Um, if you're hot tent camping, like on this type of a, a setup, this works great just because it really does save room. It allows you to uh, save room in the long run. So the cot is super easy to put together got this little locking bar right here that once you push it out you just push it in and lock it and then you do the same on the other side just push it out and lock it and the cot's super nice super tight I don't have all this stuff quite set up yet, so apologize for that. But the cot itself is nice, so I just went and got another one. I can't, I can't beat this. And it does, I mean, it sets up nice and high. And the way we do it is we actually angle them like this a little bit. It's just too far forward, that's my fault. keeps plenty of room away from the stove and uh, I'll get this pulled back out it'll keep the tent off of him and I'll be in between them I have a nice working surface it's good stuff keep on going set up the other cot that one's brand new I have to open it still they're just nice
Hey guys, we are in the tent right now. We are actually still kind of cold a little bit because it is very cold outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and light this up. I carry these, whoa, I got a bright light. I carry these really, really cool little fire starters. They're just fire start cubes from uh, Duraflame. And they're just super handy. So I can light them. Make sure I have my vents opened up all the way here. That immediately catches on fire. Yep, and I'm gonna put some wood in here. And get it going. So it is pretty cold out right now. Temperature keeps dropping. We're um, we're gonna make some pizza and just kind of hang out and enjoy the evening. We're gonna that. make pizza last time, but we didn't. Yeah, we didn't make it last time. So you hear that noise? That's the wind blowing the tent out there. See it kind of vibrating? That's that tent flap. So. Well, we're going to be listening to that probably for most of the evening, but it's all right. It's already warming up in here, so we're good. So we got our good old firebox kit out here. I had to put our silverware in there so it wouldn't scratch the inside. But we're going to be making pizza. So I brought um, pan spray. Believe it or not. Ooh. You should have brought hand sanitizer. I think I'll do the pizza. I mean, I know this is shaped like a pie pan, obviously. But I think this might be easier to kind of flip it the way we make it. Here. Ooh, it's dusty down there. Settle. Now everything's full of oil crazy so for our pizza we just have pepperonis just a 58 cent pie crust where you just add water and oil we're not going to add the oil we're just going to add the water just a small thing of pizza sauce and then just some cheese just some pizza cheese pizza blend not high-end stuff you know we're going great value here doesn't matter cheese right This recipe is a little bit different than our other uh, pizza dough recipes. This one is actually requesting hot water before we go. So we'll go ahead and grab our big old jug here. And uh, Like a deep dish. <laughs> uh, so we'll pull it out of here. And I'm gonna come over here and put it in this pan. This pan already has oil in it. Right here. Like that. You can make the consistency of that thresh that into the crust. Yep. Mom does her, um, mom uses her, um, flour and eggs and water. At first it was little, now it's big. It's getting there.
All right, so just like before, like we've done in the past, is we'll cook this um, once it starts to separate from here, right? And then we'll flip it over like so. And that'll be our pie crust. Pie. Yeah, pizza pie. Good thing it's windy out outside because when I opened up the tent door to clean off or clean out that that bowl that I made a huge mess in, it uh, it just took it right away from me. So that was really good. I'm pretty sure, at least I think I have done the uh, pizza crust in a bag before. Either that or maybe I thought I did or I tried it and it didn't work, but it just doesn't work. Don't waste your time trying that. Just use a dish and then uh, knead it out any way you need to. So anyway, uh, our mess is cleaned up that I made and we're going to keep living into this pizza. What you doing? Tired. You're tired? What about you, Dorian? What are you doing? Good. You're, you're doing good? Yeah. That's what you're doing, good? Yeah. I'll... <laughs> it's all right. You ain't doing anything wrong. You're just hanging out. I wasn't recording, but I just flipped over the crust. So far, she's looking pretty good. Sometimes we like to go thinner, at least we used to. So this, this crust is doing a pretty good job. No, it doesn't hurt my hand. Nice and even throughout. So I know from past experiences, when we do our pizza like this and we flip it over, it's time to start getting our toppings on so our pizza doesn't get overdone. So I'm going to go ahead and put on the red sauce. On the pizza. On the pizza. Oh, we're going to probably need more sauce, aren't we? Salsa. Salsa? That's marinara. Well, oh, this is like, actually pizza sauce, but like it's really close I to marinara. Like my cheese sticks in at school. Yes, but you dip your cheese sticks in at school's marinara. This is pizza sauce, so it's not as thick as marinara sometimes. This has chunks and really good spices on it. Kinda. So what we like to do is we like to put our um, Pepper. pepperonis on the bottom just because it uh, they get held on by the cheese. Make a smiley face. Well, if I make a smiley face, you'll be missing a lot of the pepperoni that you like. <laughs> No, then put two on. I gotta get that cheese on there quick, right? Yeah, you do. We don't want to burn it. I want the cheese to melt down. Is this feta? No, this is just pizza cheese. I would not put feta on pizza. I like feta, but I just recently bought uh, some nachos where they put feta cheese on top of them, and oh man, they were so gross. I love cheese, but I'm going to tell you what, I'm not a fan of melted feta. Yeah, it smelled weird. Yes, it did. All right, and that's, that's it. We're going to cover this bad boy up, and we'll let you know when we're done. Good boy. Okay, so the pizza is done. We were kind of eating on on the crust a little bit, but I don't need to cut it with a knife, I don't think. I think I can just do this all the way through it. I know usually the boys like it crust, or the crust a little bit uh, crunchy, but you know what? I haven't made pizza in a long time, so I gotta give me a little bit of a break here. <laughs> Extra cheesy. Yep, extra cheesy. It smells so good, though. So we might have to do another another um, piece, maybe with less dough, um, a little bit thinner, maybe like a cracker-style crust. But you know what? I haven't made pizza in a long time. So. And all of us can eat. Yep. 
Oh, first here we go. Here you go, Dorian, honey. Keegan. Here you go. Is there a piece and I'm going to grab a piece here for me. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do the first bite roll with the pizza. We had to change spots a little bit just because they were sitting opposite of each other. But give it a go and let me know what you guys think. I have pizza sauce in my hand. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Pepperoni. I'm just going to go Wait, for it. Is it pepperoni? It's, on the it's underneath the cheese. It's not pizza hut here. Pretty good. I know it's not a crunchy crust, mm -hmm. but it's good. It's spicy and good. Yeah, that's the pepperoni. Mm -hmm. It's actually pretty um, crunchy. All right. What do you guys think? Zero to ten. Don't give us a ten. What would you give us? And a zero to ten, be real. What do you think? A ten. No, a seven. A seven. See, that's more realistic. All right, let me try it. It was a lot softer when it, when it was done, but it's it's definitely holding its form better now. Oh man, it is crunchy, Dorian. Yeah. Mhm. Mm we found what two years ago that very cheesy <laughs> that when you're doing a pizza crust like on top of a stove you can do your dough and then flip it when that side's done and then put your ingredients on top of it by the time your stuff is melted underneath your dough and your or your crust is perfect and it's uh not burnt so that's that's kind of the hard thing i mean we burnt pizza before and let me show you yeah oh yeah let me show you the pan that we cooked it in now that it's cooled down nothing stuck so we've been wanting to have pizza now for a couple days and a couple weeks yep that's what i meant a couple weeks mm-hmm last time we made pizza while camping we smushed it together with our own hands mm-hmm do you remember that and you gotta put the toppings on and stuff yeah, that's when we were doing it outside, though, huh? Mm -hmm. You did a little crazy on the pepperoni. That's okay. Uh huh. Mmm. But it turned out so good. Try the crust. Yeah, I know the crust did turn out good. Dance off! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! All right, Keegan, what do you got? What dance you got, man? Whoa, 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 whoa. He just had a spasm. I just had a spasm. <laughs> <laughs> you usually do that. Hey. <laughs> so I was just asked where I sleep because obviously we have a cot there and then we have a cot over here. I'm sitting on Keegan's cot now. And they're goofing off playing a game over there. Um, I sleep here on the ground. I have this uh, Neo Air from uh, from Thermarest, and it's great. I like sleeping on the ground here because then over here I have control of whatever I can. You know, I just I really like it. <laughs> so yep, that's where I sleep. And then I keep my pack right there, my canteen right there. Dorian's canteen's over there. I just like having this open area. So that's where I sleep. All righty, well. The kids are, Keegan is in bed. I'm gonna dim this light down here in a minute. Dorian is getting situated right now for sleepage. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got about 10 logs, but I have more. And I'm going to go split some wood and load up. And then I'm going to come in and just hang out the rest of the night. We're probably going to call it a night here soon. Wood is cut. And I've got this cool little thing coming across here. Tell us what the temperature is right now. If you can see that it is 78 degrees. 
So I went ahead and closed that. The reason why I put it down low is because this is where I'm actually standing. I wanted it right in the, the middle of the tent. Because clearly if I come way up here in the tent, it's going to be way hotter. It's like, oh geez, it feels like 100 degrees up here. So anyway, it's, yep, we're setting about right. 80. Right about 79 degrees, almost 80, 78 degrees, almost 80 degrees. I dialed the stove back and uh, we're going to eat some Pringles. Pringles. And we're going to chill out. Dory and I are getting ready to go to bed. I'm going to go ahead and dim this light down now. Oh, yes. And that's... That's... That's going to be it. So we'll see you guys in the morning. Keegan's already sleeping. Say goodnight, Dorian. Good night. Good night. And uh, I've already closed the baffles on, or the, uh, the dampers on the stoves. So it'll, it'll chill out here in a minute. Good morning. lot out there from all the locals today. Even though I have the dampers closed on the stove, it's still 100 degrees in here right now. Let me show you. actually over the black line to the hundred. So yep. She's a tad bit warm in here. And the handle's nice and cool. Bring that, put that right over there for a moment. I'll let that water rest. Give yourself some coffee in there. I'm gonna, I went ahead and got that seal wet around the bottom of it. And I'm just gonna set it just like that. I'm not gonna press it down yet. I believe, now I'm, I could be remembering it from one of my other presses, but once you put the coffee in and put the press on like this, you let it sit for four minutes. So I'm gonna let that sit and then we'll be back. Slow. And once I get it down to where I need to, okay. 
let's see how she looks. Bums. Bums. So Dorian's cooking us breakfast. Since they didn't wake up right away, I ended up taking a nap. But it's good. I can sit back here and have some breakfast made for me. I've got my tea on, my water for my tea on, and enjoying this. Working on some scrambled eggs now. We're eating like kings. You push down your spatula a little bit because your eggs are starting to stick. It's all right. I can give them a moment to chill. So before you do that again, there you go. Good job. All right, Dorian's going for his first bite rule. Breakfast that he made for us. Good. How are your eggs? Good as well. Good as well? All right. Boys are off playing. Um, they were cutting on some wood, and then they went off their playing down at the water right now. I'm just doing some camp chores, cleaning up a little bit, and uh, I'm going to head outside with them. I'm probably going to break down camp, and then we're going to chill outside for a bit, but... We ate good. I've got another pot of tea on right now, and it's just been relaxing. It's been good. Very, very, very much needed. I'm uh, currently working on uh, the night shift right now to get some stuff situated at uh, at my job, taking care of some stuff that uh, they wanted done, but I went from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. to 5 p.m. to 5 a.m., and uh, I only have to do it for about another week. I think I'll, I'll be finished by then, but it's just rough. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a, a nights type of person anymore. In fact, at home, usually around 8, 30, 9 o'clock, I'm, I'm ready to call it a day. So, it was a little different sleeping this week, or sleeping last night, because I couldn't really fall asleep, started reading a book. Got caught up in the book, finally fell asleep, and then it was wake-up time. But I did fall back asleep and take another nap. Since the boys weren't awake, it was calm and quiet, and I went back to bed. So, anyway, we're going to break this down, and we'll be back in a bit. All right, everyone. Well, I'm going to talk to you guys real quick just about putting the uh, Winterwell Woodlander uh, medium stove away. So the stove is what keeps us warm on these really cold campouts that we come on. And we've been coming out once a week now for like the last six weeks. And I think we've recorded the last probably three or four of them. So the way I put this stove away when I'm all when it's all said and done is I break the legs down first which you can push them down I like to pull the spring back as I'm pulling them forward I just think it makes a smoother transition and less wear in future 
So once you pull those up like that, just open up the door like this. On the inside, there's this uh, grate that helps separate. So I move it up towards the top. I'll bring you guys in closer so you can see the rest. Just start putting them in like this. And then I'll grab the one with with my actual baffle on it there. And I'll put that one in, or this one in. I always put it in the in the middle with the baffle pointing in the downward direction. Before I let this one right here drop all the way down, I put another one in there. Yes. That's it. Just like that. Let me pull it back out here a little bit. You can kind of see how it fits underneath there. And that way when I go to close it, I just lift this up. And it'll close. a little bit so you can get a good deal. I'll show you that again where we're not so close. If you pull this, the spark arrestor up out of the way, it'll close nice and smooth. So that is everything right there in the stove besides the mat, which I carry separate and I store it. <laughs> I'll have to wash it off. I have a little bit of piece of egg right there from Dorian but I'll store it at home with this up and then the floor mat right on top of it there. My steak bag that I use for all my tent steaks is this really awesome bag from Fox Light Gear. I absolutely love it. from my DIY hot tent stove because if some of you guys remember I used to keep a, uh, a cookie sheet underneath it and in the cookie sheet well the cookie sheet worked great except for I got in kind of a bad habit of cleaning out my stove by using the cookie sheet just cleaning it out into the cookie sheet which that's fine except for that cookie sheet got hot and it started melting uh, the bottom of my tent. I didn't notice it until the next day. So this tent broke down once it's folded up, really isn't that big comparatively. But I also want you to think about this. I've been using this tent now for two seasons and if it was really garbage, would I still be using it? It's just an Ozark Trail tent. I made some modifications to it. I did add some patches around uh, the ends. I'll show you that. I added some patches around here to give it more support. But you know what? The amount of adventures we've had with this tent and the memories that we've made with this tent. I'm gonna leave it just like this perfect $55 at Walmart you know I put a $35 stove jack in there that my son and I sewed on crooked 
but we sewed it on together. It was a funny memory, just me sitting on a bucket and him on the outside, handing a needle back and forth. And, you know, the, the warm nights we've had and the funny games and the dance-offs that they've had, it's, it's more than just a $55 Walmart tent. So, yep, a little bit of reinforcing on the edges. And we bought the patches right next to where the tent is, just the round little repair patches. All I did is I just put them around the edges to help hold the material together. So it's good. Hey guys, we are back. Before we get out of here, we are going to uh, light up the firebox and uh, make some tea real quick. I was recently asked um, via a private message on Instagram why I wasn't using my firebox stove anymore. And if I had like some type of falling out with firebox, um, no, I'm busy. I work a lot of hours. The outdoor um, community, as much as I love it, isn't my, my job. And I'm not raising the outdoor community, I'm raising kids. So um, no, I didn't have a weird falling out. I love my stoves. In fact, one of my most favorite stoves is always gonna be the firebox nano because it's like, the Swiss army knife of stoves. Um, we've been hot tent camping mainly and it's been stupid windy out. So we've been using our winter well stove. I mean, I run Stoveaholics, the Facebook group, and I barely posted to it because I just haven't had a lot of uh, stove love really to send, to send its way. I don't have any weird falling out. There's no like strange conspiracy. It's just a, a stove. And in fact, I really like the owner of the stove company. And I think he runs a pretty fantastic business, but as far as like, no, absolutely not. I just want to get my, my cook on and I just haven't had the time. It's just, unfortunately, that's just how it goes sometimes, you know, but I love, love my stoves as you guys all know. And there's times where I, I'll go and I'll, I'll use a different stove almost every single day if I can get to it because I can. But it just hasn't been that way at work lately. Um, got a, a different position at work and uh, things have been busy. I really, really like these little fire cubes. Do I need to use the whole dang thing? Nope, but I'm going to. But yeah, I just, that was a strange message. So I'm not gonna say their name because they know who they are. To answer your question, no, I didn't have some strange falling out. Um, I love firebox, love the stoves. Don't be weird. <laughs> Get our tea on here. And it's a stove and I love to use it and lots of people out there in the community you'll love to use it. It'd be like if I quit using my heavy cover canteen. Did I have a falling out with heavy cover canteen? No. Sometimes I like to use other stuff. That's how it is sometimes. But I firmly believe and I've always believed that there's nothing better than gathering around a stove. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cook some tea up, gather it around the stove. To stay warm too. <laughs> to stay warm also. And uh, I don't know who made this fire here. This is, or this, the, whoever had a fire pit here before. It's not from us. We're just utilizing it so we're not scorching any more ground, but. We usually camp up there. Yeah, we usually camp on the other side of the park. We wanted to come down here just so we could be by the water. But anyway, guys, from us to you, thank you so much for coming along and hanging out with us and having a good time and enjoying our, our hot tent camp. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as we did. We had a lot of fun. We stayed up really late. And uh, we will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye. Peace. Say bye, guys. Bye.